The House of Love by Adriana Trigiani. There was an old house at the top of a hill with many drafty rooms. Inside there were doors that slammed and stairs that creaked and windows with holes in the glass where the wind whistled through and sounded like music. A tall oak tree grew in front of the yard and the sprawling holly tree in the back had plenty of branches for sitting. A big family lived inside. There were five girls, two boys, a mama, a papa, and a rescue dog named Phyllis. When everyone was home, the rooms exploded with conversation, laughter, and sometimes even an argument. Mia Valentina was the youngest. February 14th was her favorite day of the year because it was Valentine's Day, and her name meant My Valentine. Do you think the kids will be home in time for the party, Mia asked her mom. Absolutely, Mama assured her. What if Grace's game goes into overtime? What if there's another blizzard and they can't get back over the mountain? What if the car breaks down? Mia may have been the youngest, but even she knew everything they owned was old. There's no more snow in the forecast, and the station wagon is in good shape. Mia was relieved. No one in the Moore family will ever miss Valentine's Day. I'll make sure of that. And can and you can help. Can I can? Mia was excited. Mama and Mia climbed the dusty stairs to the attic. Mama found the bin marked Valentine's Day. It was stuffed full with red decorations, long tinsel garlands, glitter hearts, cardboard cupids with velvet arrows, and lace doll dollies. Mia helped Mama carry the box down to the kitchen. They placed the bin on the antique washing machine. Before we decorate, we must do our chores, Mama smiled. I will help, Mia Valentina promised, and she did. Mia poured bubbly pine soap into a bucket. She dusted the low places where Mama couldn't reach while Mom Mama dusted the high places where Mia couldn't reach. Mia polished Phyllis until her coat was shiny, and then she tied a shiny red party bowl around the pup's neck. Mia watched as Mama washed the windows, careful to clean around the buttons of her daughter's hand had glued over the holes in the glass to keep out of the cold. Papa wants to get new windows someday, but I like the polka dots myself. Mama stood back and grinned. Me too, Mia agreed. The parlor was the saddest room in the house. Sweeping and polishing and buffing would not help it one bit. I really have to do something with this room, Mama said. Those stripes of faded brown wallpaper clung to the walls. May I finally rip it down, Mia Valentina asked. Yes, but be careful. You never know when, when you will find a treasure in an old house, Mama said before she went upstairs to straighten up the bedrooms. Mia stretched and reached and pulled and peeled the brown wallpaper off the parlor walls. When she was done, she rolled a shard of the brown paper into a tube, turned it into a telescope, and spied through the holes like a pirate. Ahoy there, Mia, Ma Mama said from the door as she looked around the parlor. Mia peered at her mother through the paper telescope. Mama looked like she was waving her through the porthole of a ship. I knew you'd find a treasure, Mama beamed. A pretty wallpaper with hundreds of roses blooming inside. A white trellis had been hidden under the dull brown wallpaper all along. It's an inside garden, Mia marveled. You made it one. Now this room looks like our Appalachian Mountains in springtime, Mama said as she went to the foyer and lifted her garden shears out of the basket on the shelf. Mia watched her through a polka dot window as Mama stood on her tiptoes and sniffed the perfect bare limb with many small branches from the oak tree. She waved at Mia with the branch as she trudged across the yard. Mama shoved the bare branch into the crackle, cracked pickle crock. Good one, she said. Mama stood on her tiptoes again. This time, she pulled a bag of gumdrops from the shelf. She shrugged the red, strung the red, orange, lavender, and green gumdrops with a sewing needle through threaded with gold. She made a knot in the thread, which became a loop. Mama handed a gumdrop to Mia, who hung it on the tree one by one. Mama made them, and Mia hung them. Soon the candy tree shimmered with sparkling gumdrops. Now it's perfect, Mia said. I have four extra gumdrops. Mama placed them in Mia's hand. Mia savored the orange gumdrop, gave the green one to Phyllis, and put the other two in her pocket for later. Happy with their tree, Mia and Mama got to work and festooned the old house with the decorations from the bin. Top to bottom, they went up the stairs, through the rooms, and down the banister. Every room was bedazzled. Every corner had a cupid. Every door a garland. Mama opened her purse and pulled out a handful of lollipops. She put them in an empty flower vase, just like real roses. 
The mama tied a red velvet ribbon around the fire wick in the kitchen. Mother and daughter unfurled and whirling down the hallway on the way to the parlor. Hmm, mama said as she stood in the parlor. This room is missing something. Mama cut picture frames out of construction paper and hung them on the photos covered walls. What do you think, Mia Valentina? The frames are empty. What should we do? Let's fill them with valentines, Mia suggested. One for each of my brothers and sisters. They would like that, Mama agreed. After all, more means love in Italian. So Mama sat down on the floor next to Mia. Mama made hearts while Mia made art. Mia drew a basketball for Grace because she loved to play. She drew a rocket ship for Helen because she loved science. Massimo loved trucks, so Mia drew one. Olivia wanted a kitten, so Mia drew one with the whiskers and eyes. Bob slept with his baseball gloves, so Mia drew a, a ball to go with it. And Elsa, who spent every spare moment climbing the holly tree, got a squirrel. Mama hung the valentine inside the frames. They're funny, Mia and Valentina giggled. Mama checked the clock. Oh no, we have to bake before everyone gets home, she cried. Don't worry, Mama, I'll help. Mia followed her mother into the kitchen. Mia helped her mother measure the flour and sugar to sift into a mixing bowl. They mashed butter, cracked eggs, and poured milk into the bowl. Mama whipped the mixture and Mia helped pour the batter into the cupcake tin. Soon the entire house smelled like vanilla. It was time to make the frosting. Mama whisked the soft butter, sugar, and cream. Together, they frosted and frosted and frosted until every cupcake had a smooth white cap. They sprinkled and sprinkled and sprinkled the frosting with pink sugar until every cupcake glittered. Womp. The kitchen door flew open. One by one, Mia's brothers and sisters, Grace, Helen, Massimo, Olivia, Bob, and Elsa poured into the house, followed by Papa, who was so tall and big he brought the chill of the winter wind inside. Phyllis began to bark and run around the children as they peeled off their mittens and hung their hats, scarves, and coats in Bob's baseball glove. How'd it go? Mama asked. We won, Grace the eldest and tallest basketball player on her team said proudly. Happy Valentine's Day, Papa exclaimed. For you, Papa gave Mama a gold box of chocolate-covered cherries along with a kiss. Time to decorate the kitchen door, Mama opened the junk drawer. Helen grabbed one wheel of scotch tape. Bob another, and Olivia another. Massimo gathered the loose paper valentines Mama had saved in the bottom of the bin. Careful, Mama said in a loud voice. These old valentines are family heirlooms. The more children formed a shaky pyramid with Mia crawling to the top. The kitchen door was soon covered with the old valentines. Hey kids, be careful, Papa chid them. We aren't a circus act. Since when? Mama winked. As the pyramid collapsed, the pile of more children laughed. Mia, show the kids what you made in the parlor, Mama suggested. The children ran to the parlor at once, causing a traffic jam. Look, roses everywhere, Elsa twirled, and Valentine's Mia pointed. The children laughed at their funny Valentine's, but no one noticed one was missing. No one had made Mia Valentina a Valentine. She pretended not to be sad, but she was. The day with Mama had been so special, but could Mama really have forgotten about her? Time to see the table, Papa hollered. The children made a stampede and ran back to the kitchen. Mama sat in the kitchen with her feet up and sampled a chocolate-covered cherry as Papa made the tomato sauce for the macaroni. Soon the polka dot windows were fogged with steam as the pasta boiled on the stove. The children set the table. Papa placed the macaroni, salad, and bread on the table. Mama lit the candles. The family sat down to dinner as the gumdrop tree twinkled in the window and the stack of cupcakes shimmered on the counter. Even though February 14th was Mia's favorite day, the Valentine party just wasn't the same. Phyllis nudged Mia from her place under the table, as if she understood. After dinner and games, the seven or more children took turns and stood at the bathroom mirror in their pajamas and scrubbed, brushed, and rinsed until they glistened. They hung their washcloths to dry on the antique tub with lion's feet. Mia Valentina climbed into bed. She sunk into the soft mattress like a spoon in vanilla cake batter when she had a crinkle. She sat up and lifted the blanket, but there was nothing under it. She lifted the sheet. There was nothing there either. She lifted her pillow. There it was, a valentine just for her. Mia had not been forgotten after all. Tomorrow she'd ask Mama to make a frame, and she would hang it in the parlor of roses with the others. Phyllis jumped up into Mia's bed. Mia grabbed the last two gumdrop and gave it to Phyllis, the lavender one. She saved the red one for another day. Mia fell asleep with a smile on her face and her very own valentine in her hand.
The house on the hill didn't have the best heat or the newest wallpaper or windows with smooth glass, but it did have a candy tree, seven children full of macaroni and cupcakes, and enough valentines to wallpaper the world. It only took one special holiday to make a house with stairs that creaked, doors that slammed, windows that whistled, and a parlor of roses become the house of love. And it turned out there was so much love inside that there weren't enough rooms in the old house to hold it.